Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We are living in times where people are making some weirdest claims and asking for some things that have never been asked for in the history of Islam. For example, uh, one of the person commented on a video today, and also in the past people have made these comments on my video, that are the hadith that you are telling us comes in Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih al-Muslim. If they are in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim, only then we will take these narrations. Otherwise, we will not take these hadith. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. These statements have never been made in the history of Islam. Not even a small sheikh, not even a big sheikh, nobody has ever made these statements. Even in these times, the shuyukh do not make these statements because they know the statement is based on jahl, ignorance. Rather, these statements are coming from lame people. Everyday man, people without knowledge, they are making these kind of claims and statements and coming out as if they are some kind of very cautious. Per and they're, they're, they, they think they're more cautious than uh, the shuyukh, than the shaykh al-hadith, and, and other people in the different fields who have mastery in different fields of tafsir, in, in fields of hadith, in, in fields of fiqh, and, and many other fields. Uh, so they think that they, are, uh, they have higher standards than the shuyukh. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. Even Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, when he compiled, uh, the list or the rules, he never mentioned this as a rule that if it doesn't come in Bukhari, don't take it. Imam Muslim also never stated any such rule that if it doesn't come in Sahih al-Muslim, do not take the hadith. No muhaddith, no faqih, no alim whatsoever has ever made this statement. Even if you go to people like who are extremely, you know, when you say the pendulum is on the other side, are very, very on the extreme end, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. He never made any such claims or statements. Ibn Abdul Wahhab, he never made, a lot, a lot of people call him Shaykh al-Islam, uh, I mean like uh, those, who are, those who follow him are call, call him Shaykh al-Islam. Even a person like in his capacity who is regarded as somebody who is very, very extreme in one way or the other, has also never made any such statement. Ibn Qayyim never made any such statement. Ibn Kathir also never made any such statement. I don't know where in the world are these people getting all of these things from. Definitely, they lack knowledge of hadith. For sure they lack knowledge of hadith. Otherwise, they would have never made the statement. Do you guys know that even when it comes to hadith which is categorized as a sahih there are seven types of sahih hadith how many of people out there who make these kind of claims that show me in bukhari and show me in muslim know that there are seven different types of sahih hadith one of the categories of sahih hadith is muttafaqun alayh means the one that comes in al-bukhari and al-muslim sahih al-bukhari and sahih al-muslim Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, that if they come in both books, that's one category of Sahih Hadith. Another category only comes in Bukhari. Another category only comes in Muslim. Another category doesn't come in Bukhari, but it is collected on the same rules that Imam Bukhari put together. Fifth one doesn't come in Sahih Muslim, but it's collected on the same principles as uh, devised by Imam Muslim. Sixth category, doesn't come in Bukhari or Muslim, but it is gathered on the principles of both of them, that it meets both of their rules on collecting hadith. And the seventh category of Sahih Hadith is the one which is defined through the rules of an Imam of Hadith other than Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, because these are rules that are defined by these Imams on the categorization of Hadith. For example, in Sahih ibn Khuzayma, it's a book of Sahih Hadith compiled by ibn Khuzayma or Sahih ibn Hibban. It's a compilation of Sahih Hadith compiled by the rules drafted by ibn Hibban. 
And also some people say, oh, okay, okay, we, we understand that it, it doesn't come in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. But if it comes in other four, we'll still take it like Jami' al-Tirmizi, um, uh, Sunan uh, Abi Dawood, uh, Sunan al-Nisai, uh, we'll, 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 Sunan ibn Majah, we'll take it. If it's in six of these books that we call al-Siha Sitta, the six al-Siha books. But even that rule is not defined by anybody. Do you know that Imam Bukhari had memorized 300,000 hadith? That was his whole collection of a hadith. 300,000. Out of those 300,000 hadith, Imam Bukhari on his rules categorized 100,000 hadith to be at the status of sahih according to the rules devised by Imam al-Bukhari. And in his work of Sahih al-Bukhari, which he himself calls al-Jami' al-Mukhtasar. Mukhtasar, it's a summarized version. He did not even brought 10,000 hadith. Not even 10,000. So what about those 90,000 plus hadith which are categorized by Imam al-Bukhari at the level of Sahih? Somebody also placed them in their books, Right? Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, close to 30,000 ahadiths are in his book. 30,000 close to. Which is more than seven times the hadith that are put together in a, by Imam al-Bukhari. And also remember, when it comes to the hadith, there is something called the sanad of hadith, the isnad al-hadith, which is the chain of narration. Then there is something called the, the, the matan of hadith, which is the meat of the hadith, which is the text of the hadith. And then there is something called diraya of the hadith, what you extracted, the knowledge that you extracted from this riwayah. So when you come to muhaddith, the, pers the people who are the shuyukh of hadith, to them it is the sanad the chain of narration of the hadith, which they categorize as a hadith, not the matan, not the meat, not the text. So if a hadith reaches a muhaddith, a hadith scholar, that this hadith is reported by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, but it comes from three different chains of narration, they will regard it as three different hadith because the muhaddith is looking at the chain of narrations, not the text. The text is same or similar with maybe a few words here and there. So for example, if a hadith is reported by a companion who taught this hadith to 10 of his students who are the tabi'een, and those 10 students, each one of them taught another 10 students, so now the same hadith is not regarded one, it's now regarded 100 hadith because they each have a different chain of narration leading to the same companion. So, ilm of hadith is a totally different ilm. Unfortunately, people without knowledge have now been speaking in the matters of hadith. Now, if you tell them, okay, what is sahih hadith? And what is da'if? How many types of da'if hadith are there? Da'if itself has over 30 classifications. In the hadith sciences, just because a hadith is categorized as da'if, it doesn't mean it is mawdu'. It doesn't mean it is munkar. It doesn't mean that this is, you just disregard this hadith. No. No. I don't know where in the world people got this idea that if the hadith is, is regarded as da'if, they totally disregard it. Only the people without knowledge, illiterate, lame people who do not have any knowledge about the hadith sciences would make such statements and claims. If a person with knowledge will never say that because they know that when it comes to the imam of fiqh, when it is, comes to the imam of jurisprudence and the other matters, they pull a hadith of different categorization. Okay, now sometimes the hadith is da'if, 
but it becomes qawi through another hadith which is sahih sahih li ghayrihi sometimes the hadith is hasan sometimes hadith is hasanun sahihun and then there are several different categorization if you go into the hadith sciences as a field you will find over 90 categorizations of just a hadith so do not speak out of knowledge you probably think that there's a very limited hadith and you know you will only gonna this is the kind of thought process that are only going to pick from bukhari or muslim it's your it's, it's it's you made that in these times people have made this it doesn't come from the ulama so people without knowledge if come up with something crazy that carries no value whatsoever no value you do not even know you, you a lot of the people think that sahih versus everybody everything else is غير sahih so if you know arabic غير sahih khata uh, no it's not khata it's just a categorization of hadith that's all it is it's a categorization of hadith and it's it's a totally different d discussion why the categorization hadith was done at some point in time and when it was done and how it was done that's a totally d totally different thing now for example imam ahmad ibn hanbal when he was asked that okay imam al fiqh imam al fiqh uh, how many hadith should this person know have memorized inside out what does not know the asanid but also knows the metan of the hadith, the meat, the text of the hadith, also understands the meaning of it, would be able to pull out and devise solutions from those hadith. So a person gave him a figure to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, okay, if a person has a complete knowledge of a hundred thousand hadith, is it okay that this person can be called the Imam of Fiqh? And Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, nope. The man said 200,000, he said, no. The man said 300,000, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, no. The man said 400,000, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, yes, that's a minimum requirement. Minimum 400,000. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal passed away. Man returned and came to know that Imam Ahmad has passed away, uh, came to his son Abdullah and asked him, Ya Abdullah, your father once told me that the person in order to be called Imam al-Fiqh, the Imam of the Fiqh, which Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal was himself, needs to know at least 400,000 ahadith with asanid, with matan, with diraya. So your father himself, how much did he knew now there are two different qawl, two different uh, quotes. One is that his son replied, my father knew a little over 700,000 ahadith. He had the knowledge of it. And another one is he had a knowledge of one million. One million ahadith. Allahu Akbar. So what are you talking about? Now, for example, when we open Imam al-Bukhari's work, now you start reading the hadith. A lot of the people just start looking at the matan of the hadith. That, okay, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's all they know. But if you look at before that, haddathna Musa ibn Ismail, qala akhbarna Abu Awana, qala haddathna Musa. All of these are what? The chain of narration. These people know by heart each and every one of these people's name and then in the books of asma al rijal wa jahwa ta'deel there is the bahath on each one of these narrator and their life history is preserved in these books of asma al rijal where you know this person musa bin ismail who is he where did he live? Who are his shuyukh? And also, he's saying, Akhbarna Abu Awana, did he ever meet Abu Awana? When did he meet Abu Awana? Qala haddathna Musa bin Abi Aisha. Okay, Abu Awana, 
What is Abu Awana's name? That Abu Awana is not a name. And then he says, I narrated from Musa bin Abi Aisha. So Musa ibn Ismail, through one person, heard it from Musa bin Abi Aisha. قَالَ حَدَّثْنَا سَعِيدْ بِنْ جُبَيْرٍ عَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَّاسٍ All of this is chain of... And this is just one narration we're talking about. And these are thousands of hadith. Thousands of them. You know, Hafiz ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he's not called Hafiz because he memorized Quran. He's called Hafiz because back in those days, Hafiz is a title given to a person who has knowledge of hadith. And not just know the Sanat, but also has the understanding of the meaning and insight out of, the, of hadith. Needs to know at least a hundred thousand hadith by heart and by heart means the sanad of the hadith by heart needs to know the sanad of a hundred thousand hadith to be called a hafiz of hadith Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar so do not take this so lightly this is not something to be discussed in your living room where you and your friends get together and let's talk about Bukhari <laughs> You know, you are deciding the matters of fiqh just by reading one hadith or two hadith. A lot of the people, they open Bukhari and start reading the hadith from the Bukhari and never ever have opened a single sharh of, of uh, Bukhari. You know, when you start reciting Quran and if you get stuck in an ayah, you go to the books of tafsir. Exactly the same way when you get stuck on the matters of hadith, you go to the shurahat of hadith. And each one of these books of hadith have shuruh written by the imams. Imam Hajar Asqalani, Imam Qustulani, Imam Aini. Now these are big names when it comes to the shuruhat of Bukhari. But unfortunately, people with lack of knowledge, no knowledge about the subject matter, are making claims and coming out as if they are the Imams of the time. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. So please be cautious. Do not make your own rules that uh, of how and when you will take what from where you will take it. So d don't make up these rules yourself. And do not, I mean like people think that when they, they make these kind of rules, they come out very cautious. No, you don't come out cautious. You come out a person without knowledge or less knowledge or, or lack of knowledge or ignorant about the subject matter that you're talking about. I may sound harsh to you, but the point that I'm trying to make is don't do this to yourself and to the others and don't make things uh, difficult and complicated unnecessarily. Um, Anyway, so uh, inshallah, we can talk more about this particular subject matter and also the subject matter of when it comes, when we say the hadith is da'if, the, uh, the aima of fiqh and tafsir and hadith have taken da'if hadith also in several matters. And some of those matters, when I'll tell you, you'll be like, really? That particular thing is not from a hadith which is categorized as sahih? But anyway, that's for another day. It's for some other day. Well, till next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.